Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're in the midst of a very practical series, Lessons for Life, getting an education from the Bible. Today we want to talk about God-centered learning, whether we're studying sciences or art, nature. God needs to be at the very center of everything we're learning. And I think you'll be blessed as we consider this topic together. So welcome to Hope Sabbath School and welcome to our team. Yes. You can look around and say, yes, it's still five of us. <laughs> we're still in a health pandemic. But we've been amazed to see how God has blessed in spite of our limited number. We've still had a great in-depth interactive study. And we're glad you're with us and you'll continue to study with us. We've got some emails we'd like to share with you. We're always happy to hear from you. You can write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. We share the emails with the team, even with our media team. They're encouraged to know that you're being blessed. Here's a note from Levin. Levin is from Burundi, mm. but studying in Germany. Wow. Oh, wow. International. My name is Levin. I'm studying in Germany at Friedensau Adventist University. Mm. I would like to send you words of encouragement for the work that God is doing through you for the benefit of humanity. And I love your Bible study program because it strengthens me and helps me to feel the presence of God in my life. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you as you continue blessing us with the words of life. Levin ends by saying, looking forward to meeting all of you in heaven. Amen. 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 Thank you for uh, writing to us and we're excited Maybe we can get another email, learn more about your studies there in Germany. Sanu writes from India. Mm. And Sanu says, I, I want to appreciate your powerful in-depth study of the Word of God that gives me a closer walk with Jesus. Amen. I especially appreciate the powerful testimonies in the class. I lost my job in Dubai and now I'm back in India serving my family during this pandemic situation. Mm -hmm. But Jesus always gives us hope and peace, both now and in the future. I want to praise God for His mercy. May God bless the team. Amen. 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 Well, it sounds like Sanu, your family needed you back home and we'll be praying for you. He mentioned that his uh, father had cardiac surgery and grandma has health issues. She's 93. But both of them are experiencing healing through the health message. Mm. So that's really exciting. Thanks for sharing that with us. Here is a regular handheld note. Dear Hope Channel team for Jesus, God blesses me every day with gifts of love, beautiful flowers in my flower box, wonderful mm. birds, and hope at home and hope Sabbath school mm. to keep me and my family encouraged and the hope of Jesus in our hearts. Here's a little gift for your ministry. It shrunk with the U.S. exchange rate, but God will unshrink it for His glory. Amen. Amen. We love you all and pray for you often. And a gift of $64 <laughs> for Hope Sabbath School. Well, thank you, and thank you to all of our donors. We appreciate your support for our donor-supported ministry. HopeTV.org slash donate. You want to be a part of the miracle, thank you for your kind support. And one last note from Virginia. Oh, I've got two notes from Virginia in South Africa. She says, hello, dear friends. I'm so happy to learn more and more about how real Jesus is mm -hmm. through a study of his word and the changes in the lives of Hope Sabbath School members and in my own life. Amen. Thank you for all you do with Christian love. Well, Virginia, from South Africa, we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. And here is our last note from Marie in my home country in England, writing from London. She says, I've been watching Hope Sabbath School for some time and I look forward to it each week. The lessons are very practical and timely for these times. Mm -hmm. My son, who's a young adult, and I watch, but this last week we watched it twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was so much to learn. Thanks for the class participation, each one bringing their own understanding. Your testimonies bring tears to my eyes. Mm -hmm. And 
Special thanks to Jason for your enthusiasm, Jason. <laughs> well, we're not going to be singing here because we're on a pandemic restriction, but we would like you to sing our theme song. It's from Proverbs 19 and verse 20. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise in your latter days. Let's sing together. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Listen to counsel, receive instruction, that you may be wise. You may be wise in your latter days. Trust in the Lord with all your heart And lean not on your own understanding Trust in the Lord with all your heart And lean not on your own understanding Listen to counsel, receive instruction That you may be wise You may be wise in your latter days Listen to counsel, receive instruction That you may be wise You may be wise in your latter days A merry heart does good like medicine But a broken spirit dries the bones A merry heart does good like medicine But a broken spirit dries the bones Listen to counsel, receive instruction That you may be wise You may be wise in your latter days Listen to counsel, receive instruction That you may be wise You may be wise in your latter days Pleasant words are like a honeycomb Sweetness to the soul and health to the bones Pleasant words are like a honeycomb Sweetness to the soul and health to the bones Listen to counsel, receive instruction That you may be wise You may be wise in your latter days Listen to counsel, receive instruction That you may be wise You may be wise in your latter days You may be wise in your latter days Let's pray together. Father in heaven, as we talk about God-centered learning today, Lord, whether we're studying science or art or nature, whatever we're studying, we, we want to see you in the very center. And I pray the Holy Spirit would guide our study, that we would learn lessons for life today, practical lessons that would bless us on our Christian journey. Bless each Hope Sabbath School member, wherever they are around the world today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God-centered learning. Well, the Bible begins with a very bold and simple statement, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Harold, if you have your Bible open, it's not a difficult verse to find, right? <laughs> yep. Very beginning. And how does Moses, the prophet of the Lord, describe under inspiration of God the beginning of all things? Yes. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, so as we think about God-centered learning, we need to remember who the source of life is. Let's go to a little less known book, Nehemiah. Brittany, maybe you could find that little book by the uh, cup bearer, right? Nehemiah 9 and verse 6. What insight does Nehemiah give us? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 6. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their hosts, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The hosts of heaven worships you. 
What a powerful testimony. In fact, all throughout Scripture, we hear this testimony. We're going to come to John chapter 1 now, the first three verses. And mm -hmm. uh, Jason, if you could read that for us. We'll see all throughout Scripture. How many different authors compose the 66 books? About At least 40. 40? About 40 authors, yeah. right, that we know of. And, and yet woven throughout them are these powerful themes under the inspiration of God. And one is that God is the source of all life. Mm -hmm. How does the Bible read in John 1, verses 1 to 3? I have the New King James Version here, and it puts it like this, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And then if you could stay in the book and go to John 14 and verse 6, you'll hear a confession by Jesus himself. I've got the New King James Version here. John chapter 14, verse 6 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, Jesus is the Word, right? John 1, 14, He became Son of God, became flesh, and dwelt among us. So, if God is the source of all life, and, according to Jesus, also the source of all truth, why is it that so many people want to uh, exclude God uh, from their search for truth? Brittany? I think there's several reasons, but one of them that comes to mind is many people don't know the true character of God. Mm -hmm. They've heard about this tyrannical God that's just out to punish or judge. They don't know that he's a God of love who's out to save us. And so that picture of God um, makes them say, if that's who God is, I just don't believe in him. I don't think he exists. All right. That's certainly one reason, isn't it? Uh, a false picture of, of what God is like. Uh, Harold? Yeah, at times there are people who just want to do their own things. They just want to be selfish. Mm -hmm. And at times I've even heard statements like, I do not want to believe in God because I don't want to be held accountable for my actions mm -hmm. because I want to have pleasures that I'm currently enjoying, but they haven't given God a chance to allow His pleasures to fill their lives. You know, you talk about their own agenda, which doesn't include God. Paul talks about that in Romans chapter 1. Mm. I wonder if uh, you could read that for us, Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 21. I, I think, uh, Brittany, you're right that some people have a false idea. Others uh, have another agenda. And I suppose there's some that just don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But let's see what Paul says to the Romans in yes. Romans 1, 18 to 21. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness mm. because what may be known of God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. It goes on to say that professing themselves to be wise, mm -hmm. they became yeah. fools. They became yeah. fools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some people who seriously are searching and haven't found God yet, mm -hmm. right? But there are some who just start with the premise, I'm excluding Him, this is my life and I'll do whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. We're talking about God-centered learning. If God is the source of all life, why is it important that we not exclude Him but rather include him in all of our uh, learning activities. Mm. What do you think, Brittany? Well, 
I know many people and even myself, if you try to search for meaning or for purpose, you'll never find it unless you find God because he is the author of our lives. He knew us in our mother's wombs even when we were being conceived and he you know, created us and it says in Psalm 139, he has a plan for us, he has a purpose for us and he, his thoughts are more in number than the sand. So any ideas or dreams or aspirations that we have, his are way higher than ours. And when we know God, he gives us true meaning and purpose. It's almost like, I don't know if any of you do puzzles, but there's like a big piece of the puzzle missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm if you exclude God, right? Mm -hmm. You're never gonna get the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jason. One other thing too, not all learning is necessarily uh, God-centered. And mm -hmm. so if we don't have God, we have to be careful because we could have learning that could be actually harmful to us and harmful to other people. Mm -hmm. And we'll come to that later in our study, but recognizing uh, that, that God really, if he's the source of all life, mm -hmm. he should be somehow central to our lives yeah. as we, pursue whatever learning he leads us to. So did anyone here have a time in your life when God wasn't at the center, when he wasn't really directing your thoughts and study? I mean... Harold? The thing is that I grew up in a family that believed in God, but at least I can say this, there was a time that I recognized God existed, but my life was not reflective of that I was living a Christian life. Mm -hmm. So I did stray away but still had the knowledge that actually I do believe there is God. I mean, similar to what James says, the demons believe, but they don't like submit to God. Right. So I was living that kind of lifestyle. But in the end, God actually rescued me <laughs> through people that has, he has been sending. So, but I haven't experienced like being an atheist mm. and then be becoming you know, a Christian. So you went from what some people would call a nominal Believer. Yes. Mm -hmm. The nominal means that's your name, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, I believe in God or I'm a Christian. To actually wanting him to be the center of your life. Yes. And that's a big shift, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Not only is it important to recognize God in our learning because he's the source of life, but he's the source of wisdom too. Mm -hmm. Jason, there's a little book right before mm -hmm. Revelation. Um, it's called Jude. I don't have to tell you which chapter because there's only <laughs> one. But in verse 25, what does Jude uh, say? How does Jude describe God? And I've got the New King James Version here. Jude, uh, the only the chapter 1, verse 25, says, To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Mm. Who alone is wise, does that mean there is no wisdom apart from God? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> we've we've got mean. some people going yes and some people going no. Uh, could people discover wisdom that really is from God but not yet know that God's mm -hmm. a part of it at all? Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There was a story in the scriptures, and, and uh, Shane, I'm going to ask you to read the story in 1 Kings about a king, uh, a young king, who recognized that maybe he had a little wisdom, but he needed more wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, he knew that God is the source of all wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so he comes in 1 Kings, and we're going to look first at 1 Kings 4 and verse 29, and then we're go, going to go back to chapter 3 and uh, hear a little more of the story. How does your Bible read there in 1 Kings 4, 29? And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Why did God do that? Well, that's why we need mm -hmm. to go back to chapter 3, verses 5 to 10. But it says God gave him how much wisdom? As much as the sand yeah. on the seashore. <laughs> Innumerable. <laughs> yeah, immeasurable amount yes. of wisdom. Unfortunately, if you read his story, he didn't always follow the wisdom he'd been given, did he? Yeah. But uh, let's see why God blessed him so profoundly in 1 Kings 3, verses 5 to 10. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness. 
that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered, nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. bad. For who is able to judge this thy, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. If you read the rest of the story, God said, because you asked for that, for mm -hmm. wisdom, I'm going to bless you in a lot of other ways as well. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's that simple that God's the source of wisdom, Solomon raised his hand and said, I need wisdom, God. Mm -hmm. Is that available? Is that wisdom available to us too? Yes. 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 And where do you get that idea? James. James, yeah. James. In James chapter 1, one. Mm -hmm. somebody read that for us, James. Do you have it? Uh, oh. Oh, and someone's looking for yeah. it. Here, <laughs> maybe Jason it. has it. No, he doesn't. Who does have it? All right, Kim, okay. thank you. <laughs> James 1 and verse 5 is yeah. an incredible promise. If it was the only text our Hope Sabbath School team heard today or family heard today, they'd say, wow, God-centered learning. I want God at the center. And he's promised something in James 1 verse 5. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. Mm. Doesn't it say in Proverbs that reverence for God is the, the beginning, beginning, beginning of, of wisdom? wisdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. That means we recognize where the wisdom comes from, right? Yes. Yeah. And so back to what Kim just read, I'm not going to just be asking people. I'm going to ask God right. for mm -hmm. wisdom. And what did it say God will do? Give it Liberally. to us how? Liberally, Liberally and? Without reproach. No. Yes. What does that mean, without reproach? He's not going to condemn us. He's, He's not going to condemn us. He's going to say, I'm so happy you asked for wisdom. Yeah. I'd love to give mm -hmm. more wisdom even than you thought I would give you. Mm -hmm. So think of a time. I know we've got some people here have been on uh, journeys where you had to learn a lot of things. Can you think of a time when you said, God, I need wisdom. Will you please help me? Jason, you're nodding. Mm -hmm. Sure. Tell us the time. So there have been quite a few times in my life. I'm thinking of one particular one when I was uh, deciding what to do once I finished college. I had, was preparing to take a test, and I wasn't sure, should I go straight into law school or should I do something else? And my plan was to go straight into law school, but somehow... I started getting these scores that weren't what I wanted for law school. And so I started, I, I prayed to God. I said, God, is there something else you're trying to tell me here? What is going on? And so I actually had a conversation with God where I prayed, I listened to him, and God brought up the idea that maybe I should take a year off and do something else. Maybe I should go be a student missionary, which was a dream of mine, but I'd always been so busy in school. So I was like, well, you know what? It might not be a bad idea to, before I go and get my further education, maybe I give back a little bit. I find a way to help other people. And so, sure enough, a few months later, I had signed up and I was on my way to be a student missionary, uh, which was uh, such amazing opportunity. I still went to law school, but that extra year gave me opportunities to grow my faith and give back and really prepared me a lot better for what God was having for me. Mm. So your words, it might not have been a bad idea. Actually, it was a good idea, right? <laughs> yes. Because God has good ideas when we ask for wisdom. Anyone else? Harold? Yes. Um, actually, my academics were very bad growing up. So my mom used to do my homework. She did everything for me. And I saw myself as a dumb person. And I, I thought that I was never going to do good in life. And it got to the point where I was getting so many, so much bad grades, and this was I was in sixth grade, and I was like, you know what? I know I'm not following the Lord too, so I just like, Lord, help me with these sins, but also help me with school and give me wisdom because I do not understand anything. My mom is doing everything for me, and the teacher thinks so I'm lying in school. Ah. So, in the end, I was like, I prayed, then I opened the book, and it's like, wow, all these years I was afraid and. Everything makes sense. Mm 
mm. I became the salutatorian, like the second of, of the class at that time. And then in high school, I became like n the number one in, in school. <laughs> so it's like, wow, thank you, Lord. I, I was never expecting all of this. It's not just about being the top of the sure. class, right? It's, that's great. It's the fact that you prayed a simple yeah. prayer, mm -hmm. say, God, please give me wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, whatever topic we're studying, whether it's law or medicine or research, science or speech language, pathology, mm -hmm. whatever it is, if God's at the center of it, mm -hmm. he's there to give us wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. Kim, do you have a time when you just say, God, I need wisdom? Um, yeah, it's actually what I'm going through right now, Pastor Derek. So I got my PhD and now I'm doing my postdoc. And with a postdoc, I can decide to either become a professor or work in industry. Um, but there are also different avenues that I could go down in industry. But I've been asking God for wisdom to show me what to do next these upcoming years in life. Mm -hmm. And he's directing your path? Um, yes, he is. Um, we'll see if... He he lets me stay at the company that I'm working with now. You know, one of the things I'm learning even from this series, Shana, is that God can be directing and I still don't know all of the outcome, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Have you got a testimony where you've said, God, I just need wisdom? Um, well, like Kim said, it's like currently a work in progress. Um, so I was a teacher for two years and I'm on track to get into medical school. Um, so I'm currently asking him for wisdom to help me with the very difficult um, medical school admissions test um, that I'll be taking in a couple months. And so the wisdom to discern um, how to study for it and also how to further impact lives once I do get into I think school. maybe there'll be Hope Sabbath School members around the world <laughs> praying for you. <laughs> yeah, not just saying, you know, what would a secular response be? Just study for yeah. it. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. yeah. And like, I don't need luck. <laughs> I need God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I need his wisdom. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Which you told me he gives liberally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And without reproach. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else want to share? Brittany. Sure. Many times in my life where I've come to a crossroads, God has given me wisdom about the next step I should take. And one of those was when I came back from being a student missionary in the Philippines, I was reconsidering if I needed to change my major or what I needed to do, and I just didn't have peace. And I was really praying and seeking for God to show me, should I switch my major? Should I go? And, and when I was in the Philippines, I had the seed planted in my heart, this thought that I needed more education in how to teach the Bible, um, that I knew, you know, the Bible stories, and I just didn't know how to explain my faith or my beliefs that well. And so that um, thought came back when I was praying yeah, look into Bible school. So I looked into a couple different options that I'd heard friends had gone to and had positive experiences and all of them, their deadlines were passed for applying for that next um, semester. And so I was like, okay, well maybe God's just preparing me for the future. And then that very day um, that I was praying about it, I got an email from a friend who had been a student missionary with me and he had said, you know, I felt impressed to apply to theology school, but I checked and all the deadlines were passed. And so um, I applied anyways, and I still got in. And I was like, wow, God, okay, I guess you want me to apply anyways. And so I applied, and within three days of applying for a specific Bible school, um, I found out that I was accepted. And six days later, um, the money was coming together. And 10 days later, I was there. And I was just <laughs> like, wow, God, you're amazing. When we think something's impossible, if that's what you want us to do and we seek you and we're surrendered and we're asking for wisdom, you will direct our paths. So I have a question, if you don't mind me asking, uh, Brittany. You are now a speech language pathologist, which means you have a graduate degree. And someone might say, well, I guess you wasted that year when you went to Bible school. Uh, how would you respond to that? Well, after Bible school, God continued to guide me, and I ended up being a Bible worker where I was teaching the Bible full time for three and a half years. And those were some of the best years of my life, just seeing God um, work through me to reach many people for, for Him. And that um, experience has equipped me that wherever I am and whatever position I'm in, God can use me to reach someone else. And so my husband and I, we like to always have at least one Bible study that we're doing with someone in the community um, to continue sharing, you know, our faith with someone else and to lead people to Jesus. I noticed Brittany kind of gestured towards Harold because yep. that's your husband right there. People write sometimes say, are they related? <laughs> what, what a privilege when we can serve God together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I think 
you know, an answer to the question, was that year wasted? The answer is, you're on Hope Sabbath School. Mm. <laughs> We're teaching people in over 200 countries around the mm. world. When we put God at the center, whether it's getting ready for medical school or law school or whatever, he always has a good plan, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. He's the source of life. He's the source of wisdom. So it's not like, well, you go to Bible school. I'm going to go to PT school where, where God's not the center. No, mm -hmm. he needs to be the center everywhere, mm -hmm. doesn't he? One of the things that um, I think really helps us to keep God at the center is to recognize him as our creator. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's another area that's under attack right now. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't recognize God as creator. But let's look at a few verses that really emphasize. And then I want to give you an opportunity to share how you've learned about God through his creation. Genesis 1 and verse 31. Jason, do you have that for us? So after the description, the inspired record of the creation, what do you read in verse 31 of Genesis 1? I have the New King James Version, Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. That's at the end of the creation, and then the seventh day, of course, he blesses and makes it holy, sets it apart mm -hmm. uh, as a symbol of resting in him, right? Beautiful, the creation of Sabbath. But... Uh, in one of the Psalms, so this is 3,000 years ago, the psalmist David writes a scripture song mm -hmm. about uh, God-centered learning when we're studying nature. Keep, keep an awareness that, that God is the creator of all things. Psalm 19. Kim, do you have that? Could read it for us, please. Verses 1 through 6. Sure, I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words, whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber. And, like a strong man, runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. How many people can receive a witness about God from creation? Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah, it, it goes to <laughs> all, the earth. all the earth, right? Mm -hmm. yes. So, on a remote island, in a dense jungle, God can catch the attention of people through his creation mm -hmm. uh, if they'll watch. Let's see what lesson we can learn according to Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, verses 26 through 30. Matthew chapter 6. Jana, looks like you have it there. Verses 26 through 30. We're talking about God-centered learning, which could mean even if you take a walk later today, or next week, mm -hmm. that you could, you could keep God at the center of that mm -hmm. experience right. yes. and learn some lessons. What's one lesson we could learn? Matthew 6, verses 26 to 30, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? So what's one lesson we could learn by studying nature? How yes. God provides. <laughs> How God provides for us. How God provides. Yeah. God, God shows his love and mm -hmm. his care. He cares for the birds. 
of the air, mm -hmm. right? He, the flowers. He, he created beauty even in flowers. Mm -hmm. Is he? Is he not going to create beauty in your life and mm -hmm. and care for you? Mm -hmm. uh, a lesson that we can learn through studying nature. Mm -hmm. um, now nature's imperfect. I know there, it's there's thistles as well as beautiful flowers. We live in a broken world, mm -hmm. yes. but. Uh, Share a time when you caught a glimpse of the beauty of God and his character uh, through a study of nature. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brittany. I remember one time I was driving in my car and I was struggling with some thoughts that were going through my mind and I was um, just kind of feeling a little bit hopeless. And as I was driving, it was actually storming outside and there was like a dark cloud in front of me and it was kind of like the weather was reflecting how I was feeling. And then, um, from the back of me, the sun started shining and breaking through, and then I saw this beautiful rainbow. And it just was like God was speaking to me saying, look, just like I promised that I would never flood the earth and I would be with Noah, I promise I'm never going to leave you. I'm going to be wow. with you through this experience. And it just brought so much joy and peace to my heart. And each time I see a rainbow, I think about God's care for us that, mm -hmm. you know, just like he was there for Noah and his family, he's going to be there for us. You know, I thank you, Brittany, for sharing that because viewers around the world might say, well, if only my life was like Brittany, you mm. know, never had any struggles, never any challenges. But, but you're saying that you had a time when you felt overwhelmed, mm. kind of hopeless, and, and it was in that time that God caught your attention, not mm. through talk radio, mm. though I suppose it could happen, but through nature, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Now, Kim, I want to ask you a question. You're a scientist, so you studied chemistry and all kinds of things that I don't understand. But that's part of nature, isn't it? It's part of God's creation. It's incredibly complex. Um, in your studies, did you have experiences where, where God caught your attention in some way? Um, yes, Pastor Derek, especially in science classes. Um, when when I studied like the nucleus of a cell or the components of a cell, just it's it's very complex, mm. um, and I could see how a God had to have created that. There was a designer for these things. Mm -hmm. So why do people come to the conclusion that there's no creator, or, and then they come up with another theory, you know, mm -hmm. like the theory of evolution, mm -hmm. which uh, has been occupying a lot of people's thoughts and serious scientists trying to explain the origin of life. Um, why do people so easily discount God from life and learning? What do you think, Jason? Well, sometimes it can be because they can't actually see him. Because we live in a sinful world, we have some separation. And so people, whether unintentionally or even intentionally can use that separation to say, well, I don't see God, I don't see his working, and so therefore I'm going to come up with my own interpretations or allow for my own thinking to triumph, you know, the biblical record or other authoritative sources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember meeting a scientist one time, a very distinguished gentleman, and he was an atheist and an evolutionist. And I asked him, and, and he said something that really made me think. He said, I know that there are flaws. I mean, nothing comes from nothing. And how do you explain all of this complexity that Kim talked about? But he said it's the best explanation we have if you start with the premise that there's no God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If there's no creator, mm -hmm. yeah. God here somehow, mm -hmm. did we get beamed in by aliens? Or is it just, uh, you know, millions, billions of years and time and chance? Um, I guess whether God's at the center and heart of things really affects the way that we look at everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brittany. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, I've heard many people talk about the de debate between evolution and creationism, and, and what I've heard over and over again is it takes faith to believe either side, because mm -hmm. there's not um, enough evidence necessarily for evolution, but there's, like um, Jason said, we don't see God physically, but we see his effect and his working in our lives. So either one takes faith, um, and I choose to believe Jesus because I've seen him working in my life and I, I have um, enough evidence for me to put my faith on that side. But others choose to disregard God, like you said, and then they put their faith on another side. Sure. Yeah. Maybe when it's all said and done, as one of my professors told me, um, anyone who's not 
uh, struggled with these issues has never thought about them. Mm. Mm. Life is complicated, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we choose where we're going to place our confidence right. mm -hmm. that we're not here by accident, that in the beginning God did create the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not only that he's all wise, but he wants to give wisdom to us, right? Mm -hmm. As a testimony. Yes. I was just Carol. going to add that, um, because I've been paying attention to many debates between atheists and creationists, and one of the biggest issues that they have is how can an all-powerful loving God exist when they're suffering? Mm -hmm. Because if we, when you look at the lives of these atheists, they've experienced a significant trauma, a loss of a parent, or accidents that happen in their life, and they question, like, why? So it's kind of hard for them to reconcile. There is a God, but this is happening. Mm -hmm. And at times they rather just take the idea of God out, just probably, probably for, for the sake of comfort, and just live their lives however they want to. Mm -hmm. So they haven't given God the opportunity to God to work in their lives. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's like also one of the issues that there's a lot of increase in atheism because also Christians don't even reflect the character of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you say that you're a Christian, but you're not reflecting the love of God and I need comfort and you're not giving that comfort. So God is also that kind of God that I'm seeing in you. That's how I see him too. Mm. So, so what do you do, Kim, if you've got a coworker, um, well-educated, who has a view that doesn't include God at all. And so all of her learning has not been God-centered. It's mm. just been information-centered. Uh, how, how do you introduce her to a different view of the world where, where God really is at the center of all things? Um, I think it's really important for them first to want to learn about God. Um, so what I normally do is, um, so I can get an example, Pastor sure. Derek. So I had a classmate in grad school and she was going through a hard time. And she asked me, Kim, what do you do on the weekends? So I gave her like a list of options. <laughs> So I said, well, I went to Costco on Sunday to do grocery shopping. Um, I went to church on Sabbath and I spent time with my friends and um, I cooked dinner on Friday. And she said, oh, can you tell me more about church? So I knew <laughs> that there was an interest there about spiritual things. And then from there, I was able to talk to her more about my faith. Mm. That's an interesting, uh, she, she could have gone for Costco or cooking, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but she went for church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so you're saying, you, I guess you gave her that, you opened the door. Yes, mm -hmm. and you have to listen to her as well sure. and meet and, her where she is. And the fact that you were willing to do that was part of reaching out to her, wasn't it, Brittany? Mm -hmm. I think one of the best ways to approach anyone, but especially one who doesn't believe, is to first get to know them and, and show an interest in them like Jesus did. That's what he did over and over again. Christ's method was he showed, you know, compassion and interest and care. And then once he won their confidence, he was their friend. Then they wanted to know who he was and why he behaved the way he did. And so I think it's the same thing with us, that we need to show compassion and interest and care. Once we win friendship with someone, then they're gonna wanna know more about us. And they're gonna wanna know why we act and believe and behave the way that we do why you're such a nice person, <laughs> mm -hmm. why you're not depressed mm -hmm. or self-medicating like I am mm -hmm. because I feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, I had times when I felt like that, but here's what God has done, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Keeping God at the center. Shana. Um, so the Apostle Paul says that our lives are epistles that are known and read of all men. So I think that's an important first step as well. Our lives have to reflect the light that we have from Christ. Um, mm -hmm. And that's uh, an impactful witness to people too, especially considering the climate we live in. Mm -hmm. Our world is full of turmoil and to see somebody happy and have peace, is like, you're weird. <laughs> what <laughs> what you is know? that? What yeah. do you know that I don't know, right? Right, mm -hmm. and, and so that is uh, an important wedge um, to sharing the gospel. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Well, let's talk about some things we shouldn't learn. Mm -hmm. uh, some learning to be avoided. And by the way, if God is at the center, mm -hmm. you know, it would be like saying, okay, let's, there's four movies we could watch, mm -hmm. right? And probably just by the rating on the movie or by reading the little paragraph, no, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If God was here with me, which I think he is by the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. If Jesus was by my side, um, that might affect the decisions I'm making. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about 
some learning that needs to be avoided. Let's uh, go back to the wise man Solomon to Proverbs chapter 1 and Proverbs 4. We'll look at two passages uh, and see what we can learn there. Jason, do you have Proverbs 1? And then I'll ask Harold to read Proverbs 4, 14 to 19. Proverbs 1, verses 10 through 19. I'll be reading here from the New King James Version, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 through 19. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its owner. So the person says, well, Harold, I'm just going to see what's happening, you know. Oh, well, like there's this party, you know, and they've got lots of this and that which shouldn't be there. So I just went to see what was going on. No. <laughs> what would Solomon say? Don't in, his, go. in his wiser moments. Mm -hmm. That's not a learning that you need to make, mm -hmm. right? No. Yeah. You don't need that lesson. Proverbs 4, Harold, yes. verses 14 through 19. Mm -hmm. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It reads, Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep unless they have done evil, and their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. For they eat the bread of of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. So if you see something and you go, that's not God-centered in any way, what would Solomon tell us there? Turn around. Yeah. Keep going yeah. the other way. Don't just close your eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember a student who said, well, I realized I shouldn't be looking at the, those publications, so I put them all in the corner of my closet. Oh, no. Get rid of them. <laughs> Get rid of them. Mm -hmm. Turn away and pass on, yeah. right? Yeah. There is another text, and if you wouldn't mind reading it, Kimberly, in uh, 1 John 2, where... John the Apostle in 1 John 2 verses 15 through 17 says, uh, here are some things that you don't need to learn. Uh, some learning to be avoided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what does John say there? I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So what would you say to a person? They say, well, I'm going to study, choose something negative. Uh, I'm going to study the harmful effects of pornography. Or I'm going to study... Um, the negative effects of being involved in witchcraft. Um, what, Jason, you're shaking your head like, uh, what would you say to that friend who, who says that to you? By the way, many have been caught in those traps, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you say? So I would say, while you may have a genuine desire and you may actually think you have good intentions, be careful because we are 
weak humans, we don't know what we're doing, and there is so much learning out there that is problematic that the devil has literally put as a trap, as Proverbs referenced. And so you may be unwittingly walking into a trap of the devil, mm -hmm. and he could use those things, even if you think you're doing it just to understand, mm -hmm. it could be used to harm you and harm others, and it could even harm your salvation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brittany. I was thinking about a verse in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that's basically telling us that whatever we behold will become like that. So by mm -hmm. beholding, we become changed. So what we're looking at, what we're spending time doing, it's going to impact us. It's not just something that's going to go in one ear and out the other, ear in my eyes and out the other side. It's something is going to change us from the inside out. And so whatever we spend our time doing, is this going to change me in the way that I want to go? Is this the way that's going to lead me to Christ or lead me away from Him? So if there's any question whether I should spend the next year studying something negative, mm -hmm. um, what should I do? Mm -hmm. Seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seek the Lord? What about seek counsel from godly friends? Who yeah. Say, yeah. That's not a good idea because here's what happens, Brittany says, mm -hmm. if you keep focusing on that negative thing. Mm -hmm. right. Dana? Um, and you also have to consider, are my actions glorifying God? Like, is me choosing this course of study going to enhance my relationship with God and help me to be a better witness. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If it's not, then, you know, it's a dangerous course to go down. Mm -hmm. Or can I use this as a tool to, um, to help win souls for Christ? And if it's not, then, you know, it's pointless. Mm -hmm. Sure. There, there, there's, a, um, there's a positive uh, to the negative of don't look at the bad. Uh, there's a positive principle that Paul gives us in Philippians 4 mm. verse 8 mm. Mm -hmm. and uh, Brittany it sounds like you've you know that one you were kind of nodding mm -hmm. but it's 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 powerful isn't it mm -hmm. as we think about uh, God-centered learning uh, some areas of learning may be off limits mm -hmm. we might say no that's not something for a follower of Jesus to devote her life to or even a year of her life to mm -hmm. uh, or even an hour of her life to What's the guideline in Philippians 4, verse 8? I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, Meditate on these things. So focus on the, the positive. on the positive, just, mm -hmm. pure, true, noble, mm -hmm. lovely. lovely, good report. Good report. Yeah. Um, let your mind focus on those things. So, mm -hmm. some areas of study, off limits for a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, what other principles should guide us besides it being something positive? Mm -hmm. Let's say someone's watching the program today, and they say, you know, um, I guess maybe I was like Harold. You know, I'm like Harold was when he was young, you know, felt like I could never really attain very much, and, and you've been a tremendous testimony of, of, of what God could do. Mm -hmm. um, how would I know how to start learning? I, I know I'm going to avoid negative things. Mm -hmm. What else should guide me in, in choosing areas that I should study? What would you say? Well, I mean, for me personally, um, what I try to do is anything that helped me build relationship with people who are involved in the similar skill, that allows me to connect with them. Okay. Because people have different hobbies, and obviously I need to make sure that the hobbies aren't going to negatively influence me and, and the other person. Sure. But it's something that helps me build relations and get closer to them and relate with them and, and on a way to like witness and share God so that they can see, wow, actually, I didn't know that you like this, and tell me more about you. Mm -hmm. um, similar to um, what Kim shared with her, her, was it a roommate, I believe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so okay. it's like, I just find, I try to do things that gives me opportunity to connect. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm thinking like uh, shadowing, you know, maybe mm -hmm. you're thinking about medical school. Mm -hmm. If you shadow someone mm -hmm. that's doing something you think you might want to learn. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's God-centered, would it be even better to shadow a Christian mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. physician mm -hmm. or a Christian attorney mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. yeah, because we're seeing their whole life mm -hmm. and not just the, 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 uh, 
work assignment, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Brittany? Yeah, I was going to say I had that experience when I was a junior in high school. I was praying about what I should do as a career and um, what I should study. And then I um, was praying and then I went to a junior preview which showed like all the courses of study I could take. <laughs> and one teacher said something that really changed my life. She said, um, you know, you love working with kids. Have you ever considered speech language pathology? And I was like, well, I don't even know what that is. And she said, well, you should go and shadow some people this summer and see if that's something you'd like to do. Mm -hmm. And through shadowing and praying, and I looked at um, shadowing teachers as well, I saw what their life was like, like you said, and it helped me to get the big picture and see where God was leading me. When my uh, younger son was 18 and thinking about his career, he took a class in English and they, they asked him to do a personality test and then find out what professions would be a good match and to find out if when you finish your course of study you could get a job. Mm -hmm. uh, is it worth being that practical mm -hmm. about saying, hey, does it match my personality and can I support myself and my family when I'm done? Mm -hmm. yes. um, should it be that practical, do you think? Yeah, sure. And when it's all said and done, if anyone lacks wisdom, ask, ask God. Ask God. Mm -hmm. And what if you find yourself going in the wrong direction? He can <laughs> reroute, yeah. turn you around. Uh, could you take the wrong direction that isn't a wicked direction, it's just not the best direction mm -hmm. for you? I think you talked about academia versus... Working you know, for a company. Yeah, working for a company or working as a teacher or going to med school mm -hmm. or working in law practice or being director of plan giving a hope channel god can direct our path right mm -hmm. and help us find something um, god-centered learning that i think goes on for our whole lives Brittany, i just wanted to share i um, was really fearful about making such a big decision because i'm a perfe perfectionist uh, by nature and i don't want to make the wrong decision but i heard advice that was very um, helpful that a, sh a moving or something that's not moving can't be directed, like a ship ah. um, that's in the water. If it's not moving, the sail can't be directed by the wind. And so many times, like you said, we take a step forward. And if that's not God's will, then he'll show us the move to the left or move to the right. But if we just sit still and say, well, I'm not going to make any decisions or any dis choices until I know for sure, well, God might not be able to lead us until we take that first step of faith. So God-centered learning is not just God in the learning, but God by our side mm -hmm. on the learning path. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing thought that God cares about you and your future. And he wants to be the very center of what you're doing, whatever your career option, whatever your profession. He wants to be at the center and guide your steps, give you wisdom and give you the joy and peace of walking within his will. Mm -hmm. Let's pray that whatever we're doing, that we can have that experience. Our Father in heaven, just it's a beautiful awareness that you care about every aspect of our lives. And I pray whatever we're doing, whether we're already in a career or still in study, that God, you'd be the very center of our learning and the center of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, that principle could change everything. God, you're not only, I want you at the center of my learning, but I want you in the center of my life, walking together. And when we do that, friends, we'll find the plan that he has for us and the way that he sets before us. Follow that plan and then go out and be a blessing to those around you.